So if you have an old MacBook, MacBook Air, MacBook Pro, and the Mac OS doesn't feel quick and snappy enough and you want a lightweight OS, you can use it as a Chromebook. So the best thing first, there is no change in your Mac OS installation, your data or anything because this Chrome OS right now is booted off a USB drive. So you can just test and play around with Chrome OS to see if that fits your needs and if that feels more snappy and maybe more useful on an old MacBook than an old Mac OS or with OpenCore Legacy Patcher, the newest Mac OS. There you can find my ultimate tutorial here about. So you don't have to change anything if I just unplug the USB and reboot. The regular macOS installation, all my files, all my data are still on that MacBook. You don't change anything on the internal SSD. At least until you want to and you install the Chrome OS on that MacBook. But that's later in the video. Second, what hardware is compatible with Chrome OS? As I tested it through all my different old Mac models, I found out that due to the nature of the Chromebooks where the Chrome OS is installed natively, you need a MacBook, MacBook Air, MacBook Pro without a dedicated graphics card like Nvidia or AMD 80. So if you just have a MacBook that has an integrated graphics like Intel HD graphics or Intel Iris, that's a good foundation for Chrome OS, okay? Because the Chromebooks don't come with dedicated graphic cards. And unfortunately, it doesn't work, for instance, on a Mac Pro that always has a dedicated graphic card, on an iMac that has a dedicated graphic card. So that is really a project for MacBooks. Third, the age of the MacBook. As Chrome OS is quite new, I went back through my MacBooks and the oldest that I could run Chrome OS was the MacBook Air 2013. Why? Because it has a fourth generation Intel chip and that has, for instance, AVX2 uh, capabilities and it seems that Chrome OS doesn't work on older MacBooks. So fourth and the final question, how do you create that USB drive? And unfortunately all the tools that are needed to create the USB drive are either for Linux or for Windows. Down in the video description, I give you a link to my Google Drive repository where you can just download the ready set image, about 15 gigabytes that I show you right now how to create a USB drive from. And you can just plug it into your MacBook, boot off the USB and see if Chrome OS is something for you. Let's go. Down in the video description you will find all the download links and the first one will bring you to my Google Drive repository where you can just download the Chrome OS image about 14 GB to your downloads folder. Afterwards the next link brings you to the Balina Etcher and just click on download, look for Etcher for macOS version, download that and install it to your macOS as with any other software. When you have downloaded and installed the Etcher, you can just click flash from file and you select the image that you just downloaded before. Then you had to select the target that is usually your USB drive that you already plugged in. Compare the size so you select the correct disk and then click on flash and you just have to enter your password and you will just see it takes about four to five minutes to flash that 15 gigabyte onto your USB drive, depending on the speed of your drive. All completed. So after we have created the USB drive, 
We just have to plug it into the MacBook, power it on and keep the option key pressed. You hear the chime and keeping the option key pressed will let the Apple boot selector pop up and there you see different entries. So don't get confused like the left one here has the Open Core logo as I have macOS Sonoma with the Open Core Legacy Patcher installed on that MacBook. It's also called EFI Boot, so that's just a bootloader name. The center icon would just try to boot Sonoma directly, which obviously wouldn't work, and the right logo with the external hard drive or USB icon saying EFI boot, that is Chrome OS on the USB drive. We just select that and then you see the launcher of the branch framework that enables loading Chrome OS. There you see loading branch framework and shortly after you should see the Chrome OS logo. There we go. And just remember that's all booted off the USB and you can see how fast Chrome OS boots up and just welcomes you with the settings screen for Wi-Fi and anything else. And in the lower left corner here, there is a button that's called Browse as Guest. So you can just personalize everything and it gets stored on the USB drive. So I just use Browse as Guest I accept the terms and conditions and there is Chrome OS. That's already the Chrome browser. If you just close it, you can see there's the wallpaper, there is the start menu and you're already in Chrome OS. So the MacBook Pro 2015 works. Let's try the MacBook Air 2013. Same procedure. We power it on and we keep the ALT key pressed. There we go. We choose the external drive option that's called EFI boot. There is the loader. And there is Chrome OS booting up. So as we switched hardware right now, it might take a little longer but as you can see, it's already in the setup. So we can just say continue as guest, accept the terms and conditions. And there is Chrome OS. But one thing you will see here with the MacBook Air 2013 there's no Wi-Fi. And now I'd like to show you how you can alter the settings of the branch loader for the Chrome OS here on that USB drive to enable Wi-Fi on the very old MacBooks. But there's one caveat. To change the settings, unfortunately, you cannot use the regular keyboard as it's not recognized. You just need a simple USB keyboard that you plug in externally to change the settings. So let's just reboot that MacBook and I show you the settings you need to change to enable Wi-Fi. So let's switch the MacBook on, keep the Alt key pressed like before. We wait for the Apple boot selector and right now the internal keyboard works fine. We select the Chrome OS and as soon as that screen comes up, the branch loader, you just use one of the arrow keys to go down here to the Chrome OS settings. And when we start the settings, it will just load the branch framework as you can see in a few seconds. And there is the settings and it says press enter to start the branch configuration. but that won't work. So I use the external keyboard and here we go. We stay with the kernel 5.15. That's the kernel we used. And we use the space bar to set an X to every setting we'd like to change. At first we have to enable the updates. Otherwise all the changes we do are not stored on the USB drive. 
Then we go down here and we go to the Broadcom wireless. And these are the only two axes we need. We just hit return to go to the next menu. And we don't need any setting changes here. We just hit return. And as you can see, there are a lot of settings you can play around with if your Chrome OS doesn't boot. We don't need to change anything here. And we could enter any additional kernel command line parameters here. We don't need that. We just hit return to continue. And it now asks if we want to boot brunch in verbose mode. We just hit return as we don't want that in verbose mode. It might be helpful if it doesn't boot. Brunch boot splash, we just stay with the default. And it says brunch configuration safe. Press any key to reboot your computer. So now we hit return and we can unplug the external USB keyboard. We don't need that anymore. There we are. We just select Chrome OS. You see the brunch loader, two second timer, and it starts the brunch framework. But because we changed the settings now on that USB drive, it's loading the brunch framework, and now it will take a few minutes to just, as you can see, root FS, the root file system is being rebuilt. So that takes a few minutes because we changed the settings and afterwards the old MacBook Air 2013 should greet us with the welcome screen and with a working Wi-Fi module so that we can select the Wi-Fi network and use Chrome OS as intended. Let's speed it up a little bit. All right, the rootfs is rebuilt and now it says patches are being applied and that is obviously the Broadcom Wi-Fi patch that we just selected. Um, and after applying the patches, it should just start in a patched version with Wi-Fi. There we go, the Chrome OS logo is there. And now comes the exciting part. Does it boot or does it not? Obviously I've tested that before, so the Chrome OS has booted. It already detected my home Wi-Fi and it asks who likes to use the Chrome OS. I always choose continue as guest. I accept the terms and conditions. And we can check in the lower corner if there's any Wi-Fi and we see the Wi-Fi is connected. So and now that we have Chrome OS running, you can just test it without harming your existing Mac OS, as I already said. What I already found out is that the uh, function keys do work. So you can change display brightness. You can just change the keyboard lighting brightness. You can just change uh, volume buttons and so on. And for instance, the F3 key that is basically uh, what brings up all the different desktops. So you can really use it quite as a Chromebook, but just made by Apple. So to finally install Chrome OS to the MacBook, we need to go into the terminal. And that is Alt, Control and F2. But as the MacBook basically has this key for the brightness, we also have to use the function key to get to F2. So we use those three keys, function, control, alt and F2. And now we are in the terminal. If it looks as zoomed as here, you can use the control shift and the minus key to just make it a little smaller. So the localhost login is always Kronos and you can see now it's the localhost Kronos logged in. And to see all the hard disk partitions, we need lsblk space minus e7 and return. And that lists us all the disks. But basically, it's only two disks. SDA, that's the internal one, 
113 gigabytes. SDB, that's the external one, 114.6. So that's a little bit confusing because my USB drive is 128 gigabytes. But you can see that the SDB has all kinds of different partitions. There's a 4.8 gigabyte, a 4 gigabytes and 512 bytes and so on. So there are a lot of different partitions on that USB drive for Chrome OS. So if you have a 64 or whatever uh, gigabyte USB drive, you will definitely can differentiate. But basically with your MacBook, it should be SDA for the internal drive. So what we now do is sudo, so super user do, chrome os minus install and then space minus dst for destination space and now we write def and the name of the hard disk, so sda. If we hit return, you can see that all data on device SDA will be lost. Are you sure? And now you have to write yes and hit return. And so now it deletes the whole drive and installs Chrome OS on the hard disk. All right. That was it. It just took one and a half minutes to install Chrome OS. And now let's see when we just hit Alt, Control, Fn and F1, it closes the console. And if we now do a reboot, let's check if it works without the USB drive. So we just get rid of the USB drive, start it. Welcome to your Chromebook. You can use the USB drive, as I said, just to test it if you like it. Unfortunately, you cannot just have the internal drive split to use it like half for Mac OS, half for Chrome OS. That doesn't work because the installer doesn't recognize only a partition on an APFS drive. So you have to wipe it completely if you want to install it on the internal drive and then you have a Apple aluminum full body Chromebook that you can make good use of. In the second part, I'd like to show you the details how to create the USB drive with a Windows PC. And we're gonna talk a little bit about the different kernel versions, about the different Chrome OS versions, what if you'd like to update Chrome OS. And so if you haven't yet, I would recommend you subscribe to the channel and click the bell for notifications so you don't miss the next video. Other than that, have fun with your nice Apple Chromebook. See you soon. Bye-bye.